Next up is a vibrant art form from the entrepreneur's homeland. Nangendev Sharks. My name is Sophie. I live in St. Louis, Missouri, but I'm originally from Senegal, West Africa. I'm here seeking $500,000 in exchange for 10% of my company. I was born into the Wolof tribe, and in the Wolof tribe, weaving is passed down generationally, from grandmothers to mothers to daughters to granddaughters. Senegal is full of joy, color, laughter, and life. <laughs> Senegal is brimming with abundance. But when I first came to the States, I was shocked to learn that many people's perception of Africa was so interwoven with poverty. This was such a stark contrast from the place that I grew up. I wanted to weave my heritage into an art form that told the true story of African craftsmanship. That's why I created Expedition Sub-Sahara. Our beautiful, vibrant baskets are made by artisans in Senegal, all by hand and with love. Our mission, to interject joy, color, and culture <laughs> into every home with our handcrafted storage and home decor solutions. And with Expedition Sub-Sahara, I'm dedicated to giving back to the very community that raised me. Now I know that I'm standing among sharks, but make no mistake, I am a lion. <laughs> now who's ready to join me in transforming the home goods space by banishing boring storage and making this world a more cultured, more colorful place, one happy basket at a time? <laughs> sharks in front of you, you'll find your very own Expedition Sub-Sahara baskets so that you too can add some color <laughs> in your lives. <laughs> wow. So tell us about, is there a purpose for each one? Because we have three different shapes here. Yeah, we've taken our traditional craftsmanship and we've made modern vessels. They're beautiful. This big one, for example, is actually our best seller and it's used mostly for a hamper. And these are hand woven? They're all hand woven. Wow. In Senegal and you import them in. Yes. And what's it made out of? Like it reminds me of lanyard. Um, so they're actually and... made from sweet grass, elephant grass. We, we use a variety of grasses and then all the color you see is from recycled plastics. Yeah, okay. And what does it cost? How much would this particular one cost? That one would probably cost fully landed $18 and we sell it for $15. And how do you sell it? Do you sell it online? Price. Do you sell it through retail or tell us about your sales? We sell 95% online. Our total sales to date is $900,000. For wow. this year? For this year. $900,000? Wow. $900,000. Sophie, wow. I was not wow. expecting wow. that. Wow, wow. <laughs> nice. Actually, Good for last you. time we've made $3.6 million. So nine. Oh, oh why nine did you do million. What did you do last, last year, Sophie? Year? Last uh, lifetime. Last year we did $1.6 million. You are selling a wow. lot of baskets. <laughs> so, Sophie, Sophie last year, $1.6 million. What did you make on that? What profit? So, our gross profits was over a million dollars. Wow. Wow. What are your margins typically? About 60%. 60%? Yeah. So what's your overhead? Do you like not spend any money on anything? So that's our gross profits. So I reinvested into the company quite a okay, bit. Okay, so gross profits was $1 million. What was your what net, was your net profit? profit? How $75,000. $75,000. $75, okay. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. So let me take you back, actually. In 2019, we only did $75,000 in sales. When the pandemic hit, people weren't buying baskets. So March 2020, we made $4,000 in sales. And I thought about closing the business because I couldn't sustain it. Then from March to 20, 2020 to May 2020, we did $45,000 in sales. Wow. So unfortunately, um, George Floyd was murdered. And with George Floyd's murder came a huge rise through the Black Lives Matter movement to uplift black businesses. And I saw a huge shift in my business. That's awesome. That's good. So I had to ramp up production really fast. I had to bring in weavers, 120 of them to be exact. So I had to pay them fairly. I had to make sure that the places where they were weaving were, were taken care of. I had to make sure that the farmers had cards to bring the grasses. So basically, our margins kind of dwindled because we had an, a bunch of overhead that we didn't have the previous year. Got it. Because okay. it was a mom and pop so, shop. So fair, you. Are you saying that you're paying the weavers on a flat wage? I just made the assumption you were paying them on a piece basis. No, we're doing this differently. Normally that would be the way, but we're paying them so that they are our weavers. Not all of them are going to be as productive as the others. Why don't you just pay by the piece? What we're going to do is take the master weavers and make sure that they have someone underneath them who can learn from them. What's the competition doing? Wait, 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 wait hold on. The problem is that's the way it's always been done and it has done nothing for my community. 
those baby weavers are going to end up being master weavers. They have to learn from a master, Good just you, like Sophie. I did, so You're that people have a living wage. So we're doing Good things you, in Sophie. a way that Good is different. Good for you. Good yes. For you. yes. Good Sophie, for you. what did you spend on advertising last year? Last year, I spent $400,000 on advertising. Whoa. Whoa. So that's where the profit goes. Tell us about your numbers last month. Yes. So last month, we did 160000 in sales. So your average sale was how much? $206. 206 Yes. Your margins are 60%. Yeah. And then it cost you how much to acquire a customer? It costs me about $116 to acquire a customer. Hi. You only have five bucks left. Yeah. So that's your break-even right business. Now. Yeah. That's my problem. Right, but, is but, but, so I think we're you, losing money what, right now. So last month you lost money. We don't lose money. We kind of just break even. Where do you see the scalability now that you set up these systems and people in place? These are all online. Right now it is harder and harder to acquire a customer the way that we're doing it. So what I need to do is get these baskets to the masses through retail. Oh, oh you oh, want to go oh, retail. Oh. Now you want to go to retail. Whoa. Oh. For every customer you acquire, you're actually losing money. And I think that's a big problem. I don't like retail for this because it's going to tie up a ton of capital in inventory. Um, I'm sorry, this is not a business for me. I'm out. Thank you, Kevin. I love your mission and what you're doing. I think your valuation I never talk valuation, but the valuation for me is a little off here. And you're figuring so much out. So I wish you good luck, but I'm sorry I'm out. I understand. Thank you. Sophie, you're, you're in a difficult spot. But Mark, before, before you say anything, I started this business with $500. $500 to $3.6 million. I have never had a loan. I've never had any sort of debt, period. It's amazing. I, I took that $500 and I just turned it and I turned it and I turned it. Imagine what I could do, imagine, with a shark by my side. I think you operate better as a sole proprietorship where you don't have investors because you have complete flexibility. And coming in asking for $500,000 makes it really difficult to say, okay, I know exactly how I'm going to get a return. I just don't see that. So for those reasons, I'm out. Sophie. You know, at 500000 you're asking me to make a bet on the business. I'm asking you to make a bet on me. Every single person who's ever bet on me has won. And I promise you, you will never have somebody who can work as hard as I can. I don't sleep. I run the ads. I pack the boxes. I still weave when I need to. I will work like a lion. I <laughs> promise you. Bet on me. There's a difference between me betting on you, because I'm willing to do that. Betting on Sophie, I'm in, baby. <laughs> I'm in all day long. There's no doubt in my mind you're gonna make it, but as an investment at half a million, I just, I just can't do it, because I don't see the return, not the return on Sophie. I'm sorry, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you said something that most people don't realize. The only people in history who's ever changed the world are the people who never have accepted somebody saying that's the way it's always been done. That is probably one of the most dangerous statements in the world that anybody says to have you accept the way it's always been done. And as long as you keep doing that, I believe you're going to be okay. This is not an investment for me. I'm out. Thank, Thank you, Sophie. You. Thank, Thank you, Sophie. You, Sophie. Well Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Sophie. Well done. Thank you. I have never failed betting on myself. So we're going to continue, and I'm going to continue betting on my culture, betting on my weavers. We are going to take over the world one happy basket at a time. Yeah. <laughs>